All right, folks, Phil Zito here, and in today's BAS Bootcamp video, we are going to start to look at control modes. So this is gonna be two or three parts going through control modes. The first control mode we are going to talk about is a pre pretty straightforward control mode, which is just digital output, Boolean output, binary output, D doesn't really matter, but basically, what it is is you are taking a output and you're turning it on or off the output only has two states it can either be on or it can be off we see this in turning on unit heaters we see this in turning on fans we see this in driving uh, isolation valves open with an on off command so this is a very common controls mode that we're going to be going through here's how it works right first thing we got to do is we got to make sure our output is actually set up to be on off and we got to pick what action it is now not every software is going to give you the ability to do action uh, in some cases if you need it to be on when it's actually off or off when it's actually on you may have to adjust just that at the device. Now, in our ways of turning on a Boolean output or an on-off output, most of the time we are going to use either a comparative pattern, and this is something we cover quite detailed in our programming course. And a comparative pattern is where you know you'll just say greater than, and you'll have a input right and maybe it's like zone temp and then you have yourself a set point and maybe you know this is like zone temp set point and you say if uh, zone temp is greater than zone temp out or zone temp set point then we're going to drive maybe this is you know exhaust fan command this is a very common way and this is called a design pattern of going and turning on this output. So when you read in a sequence and it says fan shall be commanded on or um, exhaust fan shall be commanded on or unit heater shall be commanded on, this is most likely the code that's going on behind the scenes. So this is a common control mode. Another uh, way of doing this is just quite simply to use like an and block where you would say something to the effect of if I have occupancy command and, you know, we have that comparative pattern. We say if we have occupancy command and outdoor air is greater than, and we'll just call this OAT set point, right? So if outdoor air is greater than OAT set point, let's just grab a point right here and we'll call this OAT. And we have occupancy command, right? Then, and Here's the thing with control modes, it's not always going to an output. Sometimes a control mode is actually logical and it's going to, maybe we have this and it's called economizer enable. And this is a point that we're going to use in our program in order to do economizer enable. So this would be a binary logical point that this kind of control mode is driving on. And we'll see as we start to get to some of the more complex control modes like PID, uh, that actually most of our control mode logic is purely virtual. It's not actually in existence, it's in programming. And this is why you really gotta understand this. So one, you can read programs if you're having to troubleshoot them, but two, so that you can read a sequence and understand that these patterns these are things you can use again and again and again. All right, so that is basic um, Boolean enable. Now let's look at uh, floating control. So floating control is another thing. Let's let's go here, and uh, oh yeah yeah yeah, that's right. It's it's not here in the software. It's this. Uh, so with floating control, what this is, and you'll see this a lot with um, VAV boxes where people don't want to spend uh, money on proportional valve actuators for their reheat. So they use per, they use this uh, floating control because it's in theory a little cheaper and uh, it's just cheaper to run the extra wire than it is to pay for the actual 
electronics in a actuator that are required for proportional control. So what you would see here, right, with floating output, this is actually where you would have kind of two control modes come together. And while we're not going to really get into PID loop control in this video, what would actually happen with floating outputs is we would go and have a PID loop that, you know, maybe this is like a reheat loop, right? And so this is a reheat loop and it goes to this floating output. And we would say this hardware output is for the close and this hardware output is for the open. We would have to put our time for how long it takes for us to stroke these open. And then what happens here is this mode right here will actually open. It'll command one binary output, one digital output on, and that'll be wired up. So the hot will be wired to the controller or the actuator. The actuator will share a common and then the, um, so the hot from the close and the hot from the open will each have their individual wire and they'll share a common typically to the actuator. And so this floating output right here is a very common control mode that will be used in terminal units, VAV units. All right. So we've got that. Uh, the next control mode that we'll talk through, and this will probably be the, the last control mode for this video, is basically staged control. And what staged control allows you to do is it allows you to turn on multiple outputs. Now, there are different ways of doing this. So some software like this software right here, GFX, enables you to have a block, right, that allows you to set the number of stages. And then based on the number of stages you do, it has essentially a hysteris built in, which says if it goes above this point, it will go or above this value, it will go and turn on. And then it won't turn off until it drops below a different value. So and then it stages on and stages off other software requires you to basically use comparators and timer blocks. And so you'd use a comparator block and you'd use like a minimum on off timer and maybe a start stop delay timer and you would put these things together and then you would actually have hardware outputs. You'd have several hardware outputs that then would be driven. And once again, all of this right here is typically going to be driven off of a PID loop. So what you would typically do is you would have a PID loop and we'll cover PID loops probably tomorrow because we're going a little bit faster through this than I thought we would. Um, but PID loops are going to give you a output based on the difference between your input and set point, also known as process variable and set point. And that difference between the uh, process variable and set point is known as error. So as your error increases, the PID loops output will increase and depending on whether it's reverse acting or direct acting and that output right is going to go to a greater than block or maybe in some cases you might use like a hysteresis block where you're going to have your switch on and switch off settings so you would have your switch on switch off that would then go into this min on off timer for staging if like you're doing dx or reheat where you want to make sure they have a minimum on time and then a minimum off time and you would use that and so this output would go into the hysteresis and maybe you'd call this like stage one and then you'd have you know another stage and you would call this stage two and you would have another timer and basically what would happen is this would go to hardware input one this would go to hardware input two. And this is how in some software you would manually create a actual staged control or a sequenced control as it's called. So that's how this all works. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to go below the comments. I hope you're enjoying these BAS bootcamp videos. Please be sure to share them with folks. That way folks can get value out of these training sessions. Thanks a ton, and I hope you're doing well right now. Take care.